Hi, I'm Torben Janssen from thoughtsonjava.org. A lot of developers struggle with many-to-many -many associations and face performance issues caused by inefficient mappings. Today we talk about best practices for many-to-many -many associations so that you can save your valuable development time and create an efficient persistence layer. But before we begin, I suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more videos like this every week. Many-to-many -many associations are one of the most commonly used associations with JPA and Hibernate. You can find lots of examples for them in the real world, and you can map them with JPA and Hibernate as a uni- or bidirectional association in your domain model. But you probably also know that these mappings provide several pitfalls. In this video, I will show you five best practices that will help you to avoid these pitfalls and to implement efficient mappings. You will learn the most efficient data type for your association, why you need utility methods to manage your association, the right fetch type for an efficient mapping, when and how to use query-specific fetching, and the cascade type you should avoid at all costs. I will not dive into the details of basic many-to-many -many mappings. If you are not exactly sure how to create such a mapping, Please take a look at the many-to-many -many section in my association mapping guide. I will add a link to it to the video description. Best practice number one. Use the most efficient data type. Most developers don't spend a lot of thoughts on the data type of a too-many association. They just choose a Java util list because it's simple and doesn't perform any checks to avoid duplicates. That's okay if you implement a basic Java class or if you model a one-to-many or many-to-one association. But you should never use a list if you model a many-to-many -many association. Let's have a quick look at the IDE. Hibernate handles remove operations on many-to-many -many relationships that are mapped to a Java util list very inefficiently. It first removes all records from the association table before it inserts all remaining ones. You should instead model a many-to-many -many association as a Java util set. Hibernate then handles the remove operations on the association much better. It now only removes the expected records from the association and keeps the others untouched. Best practice number two. Provide utility methods. Bidirectional associations are mapped to an entity attribute on both ends of the relationship. So, in the previous example, you have an author's attribute on the book entity and a book's attribute on the author entity. That makes implementing a JPQL or criteria query very comfortable because you can use these attributes to define a join clause. But adding or removing an association gets more complicated. You always need to perform the change on both ends of the association. For example, if you want to add a book to an author, you need to add it to the book's attribute of the author entity, and you also need to add the author to the author's attribute on the book entity. Otherwise, your current persistence context contains inconsistent data, which you will use until the end of your current transaction. Utility methods on your author and book entities make updating and removing much easier. Within these methods, you perform the required operations on both entities. Best practice number three. Choose the right fetch type. This is a quick one. You should always use fetch type lazy for your many-to-many -many associations. It tells your persistence provider not to fetch the associated entities from the database until you use them. That's usually the case when you call its getter method for the first time. Luckily, that's the default for all too many associations. So please make sure that you don't change it. And if you want to learn more about JPA's different fetch types, please take a look at my introduction to JPA fetch types. You will find a link to it in the video description. Best practice number four. Use query-specific fetching. If you are using fetch type lazy, you need to know about query-specific fetching. Otherwise, your application will be very slow because you create lots of n plus one select issues. When you load an entity and use query-specific fetching, you tell Hibernate which mapped associations it shall initialize for each fetched entity. It then extends the select clause of your query, so that includes the columns mapped by these other entities, 
and initializes the association. And because the associations are already initialized, Hibernate doesn't need to perform an additional query when you access its getter method for the first time. You can implement query-specific fetching in several different ways. The simplest one is a joint fetch clause, which I will show you here. But you can also use a named entity graph or an entity graph, which I explained in previous articles, which you will find below. The definition of a join fetch clause is almost identical to a simple join clause in a JPQA query. You just need to add the fetch keyword. Even though a join and a join fetch clause look very similar, the join fetch clause has a much bigger effect on the generated SQL query. It not only gets translated into an SQL join, as it's the cause for a JPQL join clause, it also forces your positions provider to extend the select clause by all columns that are mapped by the associated entity. Best practice number five, don't use cascading. If you activate cascading on an association, your persistence provider applies the operations you perform on the entity to all associated entities. If it does that for all operations or just for a few selected ones, depends on the configured cascade type. That might sound like an amazing idea that makes the implementation of your business logic much easier. And that's not entirely wrong. But please avoid the cascade types remove and all, which includes remove, for many to many associations. In the best case, it only creates performance issues. But in the worst case, it might also remove more records than you intended. I explained both pitfalls and their solution in great details in a previous video, which you will find in the description box below. Or if you want to keep it simple, you can perform the required operations programmatically on the associated entities. This might require a few more lines of code, but it avoids any unexpected side effects. You can find lots of examples of many to many associations in the real world, and you can easily map them with JPA and Hibernate. Unfortunately, these simple mappings hide a few pitfalls, which you can avoid by following these five best practices. Number one, model associations as a Java util set. Two, provide utility methods to add or remove an entity from an association. Three, always use fetch type lazy, which is the default to avoid performance problems. Four, apply query specific fetching to avoid n plus one select issues. And five, don't use the cascade types remove and all. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free Thoughts on Java library. It gives you free access to a lot of member-only content, like a cheat sheet for this video and an ebook about using native queries with JPA and Hibernate. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye.